Hi folks, it's just me again, and this time I'm going to be speaking about some really cool, excellent things that are going to become um, ordinary uh, during the thousand years of peace. Right now, to our minds, our pre-raptured minds, um, talking about things like this, they seem far-fetched, they seem way, way out there, they almost seem impossible. But the visions that I've had um, about these things are quite clear and they're really neat and they've been con confirmed by the Bible. Um, first of all, i got to start off with, um, during the thousand years of peace, the Bible tells us that earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of God. And that can go both ways. That we, the believers, um, are, are going to have... Um, uh, a lot of the knowledge that Jesus is going to teach us, that our Father is going to teach us, that the Holy Spirit is going to teach us, that knowledge will be turned towards technology and making a better society um, for Adam's bloodline, uh, the natural people that are, that are going to be growing into the nations during the thousand years of peace. So that kind of knowledge will be, uh, will, will be filling um, the whole earth during the millennium. But also, um, the knowledge that common people will have in so much as they will just automatically know that there is a God. There won't be any need for faith during the millennium. People will automatically know that there is a God. He, he will make himself known to everybody and to everything during, during the thousand years of peace. Um, you won't need faith in that time to, uh, to believe that there might be a God, you will automatically know that there's a God in, in, in so much as you know that there's going to be air, that, that there's going to be sun, that there's going to be water, that there's going to be people around. People will just know that there is a God. So the knowledge of God will abound during the thousand years of peace. And those verses can be found in, uh, in, in Habakkuk, um, in case you haven't uh, um, read that much of the Old Testament. Yes, there is a book um, called Habakkuk. And um, when you get to heaven and you meet Habakkuk, he's going to ask you, so what did you think of my, uh, my contribution to the Bible? And what are you going to tell him? Um, I didn't know that there was somebody called Habakkuk. So read your whole Bible. Uh, that can be found in Habakkuk 2.14, as well as Isaiah talks about it in uh, Isaiah 11.9, about the whole earth being filled with the knowledge of God. And so, because of that, that leads me to the three... <laughs> it's getting kind of windy here. Um, inside, I should shut the window, but it's nice and cool. Um, that leads me to the three really cool um, sites that are going to be taking place um, that uh, are, are just... During the thousand years of peace, like I said, uh, they're just going to be ordinary things. People, they, they, they will just be there every day and people won't even think about them because um, they've always been there. Um, I've never known a time when they weren't there. But right now, um, thinking about it, um, again, like I said, it seems really far-fetched. Uh, the first one um, happens when... Um, when the earth changes. I've, I've mentioned before that the Bible tells us that the sun is going to burn seven times brighter during those days, which means it's going to expand. So when it expands, it's going to send out a shock wave, and that particular shock wave is going to um, hit the earth. And because I believe right now that the earth it has a lot of hollow parts. The hollow parts are where the waters used to be before Noah. Um, when, the, when the flood came for Noah, the Bible tells us um, the, the water the waters of the earth uh, sprang forth and they and they helped flood the planet as well as the waters that, that came down from the sky. So right now I believe there's a lot of hollow places in the earth. So when that shock wave of, of the sun changing hits the earth, I believe it's going to compact the earth like a snowball. So the earth will still be, uh, or, or, or the earth will still weigh the same, but it'll be just a little bit smaller. And I could go into great details about that too, uh, that talks about the mountains and the landscape changing, but I'll save that for another video. But anyway, when the earth is compacted, um, it's going to change the internal structure of everything. And so we won't have nearly as many volcanoes or volcanic activities. I believe that um, there will be very few, if any, volcanoes at all. And that all the uh, heat that is being created by the core of the earth 
um, all the heat and smoke is going to be vented through one particular place on the earth. And that comes uh, when we talk about uh, Mystery Babylon. Um, in, the, uh, in, in the book of Revelation and in Isaiah, they both talk about how that particular city, uh, wherever it is, uh, some people think Babylon is America, some people think it's the Vatican, some people think it's a, um, a town or a, a, a city in, in the Middle East. But wherever it is, we know during, during the tribulation period, um, Babylon is, 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 is going to collapse and there will be no more trading, uh, there, there, there'll be no more um, parties, uh, no more orgies and stuff like that. And that particular city, when it crumbles, the Bible tells us that the smoke from it is going to rise up forever and ever and ever, and that and that the ruins will become a home for unclean spirits and jackals and and, and things like that. And so, with the city of Babylon in ruins, um, the smoke from it will keep rising, rise, rising up forever and ever. And I believe that that will be the um, volcanic vent, the heat vent of the earth that the Lord will use to, uh, to vent the heat from the core of the planet. The smoke um, from that particular place um, will just keep rising up and up and up forever and ever and ever, like the Bible says. Um, in Revelation 19.3 and Isaiah 34, verses 10 to 17, it talks about Babylon having fallen and the smoke rising up forever and ever and ever. Now, when the smoke keeps rising up forever and ever and ever, that smoke has to go somewhere. And it's not going to fill the planet um, with, with, uh, with, with dust and ash. I believe the, uh, the atmospheric currents are going to change as well uh, when God makes the new heavens and the new earth. The new heavens being the sky as well as, as, as the starry place that we can see. So I believe there will be an atmospheric current that will take all that smoke and it will take it over top of um, over top of Israel, over top of Jerusalem, over top of Mount Zion specifically because uh, as it says in Isaiah, Isaiah 4 verses 2 to 6 that there is going to be a canopy over top of Mount Zion, a, a, a canopy over top of the glory of, of, of Israel, of Jerusalem. And it says in Isaiah that it will be a, um, a shade from the heat during the day. So it will, it will act like a filter. This, this cloud canopy, this smoke canopy will act as a filter um, to take out a lot of the um, UV rays and to act like shade and stuff like that to keep the heat down. And it also says that at night time, it will become a, um, a canopy of fire. So all that smoke that collects during the day and provides shade, somehow during the night time, the Lord is going to ignite it. So that during the night time, um, it's, it's, it's going to burn and it's going to provide light um, for those over top of, um, of Jerusalem. It'll, it'll provide a light so that they can keep working and stuff like that. And so that is one of the uh, cool things, two of the cool things that um, I've seen in a vision. And this canopy of fire, I, I, I saw that in, in real life. Um, it was during a, um, a sunset when I was walking uh, to my mom's place one night. Uh, the sunset was happening in such a way. Okay, you can hear that. Um, it's, a, it's, it's been my call for decades now that whenever I hear um, sirens, I like to say a little prayer inside my head, if not out loud, to help pray um, for the people that may be in trouble and pray for the people that are putting their lives on the line for the safety of others. It could be an ambulance siren, it could be fire truck, it could be police. Either way, there are people who've dedicated their lives to helping other people. And there are, are other people that are potentially in trouble, um, loss of property, loss of life, um, the physical bodies may be in danger. And I also pray that the Lord will convict the guilty. If there are criminals involved, that the Lord would convict them unto righteousness. So and I just had to stop for a little prayer as I heard the sirens. Anyway, let's get on with this. So um, that evening, uh, the clouds um, just filled the entire sky. And, and they were the kind of clouds that um, actually looked like fire when, when, when the sun was going down. It lit the clouds so it, they... they they looked orange. They looked exactly like fire. And that was, 
that's what I believe it's, it's, it's going to look like uh, during the thousand years of peace when the canopy of fire is burning. Uh, you'll be able to look up if you're in, in, in Jerusalem, you can look up into the sky and, uh, and, and you'll see fire burning, fire constantly burning. And I believe that something that the Lord is doing to pay tribute to when uh, he brought the Israelites through the desert. As you remember, um, if you've read the Old Testament, when Moses and, and the Chosen were wandering through the desert, they were led by the Lord. Uh, they were led by a, um, a pillar of smoke during the day and a pillar of fire during the night. So I believe um, that's the same sort of uh, tribute that the Lord is going to be paying to, uh, to the Chosen during the millennium. So anyway, uh, so we have the city of rising smoke going up and, it, and, and that smoke will be, uh, will be carried over to, um, over to Israel to create a canopy of smoke by day and a canopy of fire by night. And, it, and in the morning time, the fire will go out and the smoke will continue to build up and whatnot. Um, just kind of a hypernatural sight um, during the millennium. And hypernatural goes one step beyond supernatural. Right now, in this particular world that we live in, we've seen a lot of supernatural things. We've seen um, um, unseen forces, be they, uh, be they angels, be they demons, um, interacting with the world. Um, that's supernatural. Um, but the next stage after that is the, uh, is the hypernatural, and that's when God himself um, becomes part of our time-space continuum, and he does things like that. But the coolest thing that I've seen in, in, in a vision, and I've got a, a, a sketch of that, is something called the way of holiness. And uh, Isaiah talks about that in Isaiah 35, verses 8 to 10. And that is a special kind of road. Um, it's, it's, it's a highway kind of thing. But it's made out of um, heavenly matter, heavenly material, a, a heavenly substance that only you wise virgins, only the people with regenerated bodies, only the resurrected, the raptured, again, those who have, have, have regenerated bodies, they will be the only ones that can stand on this particular road. If, um, if someone um, of, of, of the natural flesh tries, tries to step on it, um, it'll just pass through. If they uh, throw rocks or try to land a, 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 a aircraft on top of it, it'll just pass through. It's only solid to those people who have um, had their bodies regenerated and are comprised of um, the same heavenly matter, eternal matter, that uh, God will make our new bodies out of when we get raptured. And this road is, 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 is really cool. It's not touching the, the, the actual ground surface, but it's kind of um, floating above it. And it's a highway that stretches on for miles, and it goes through the countryside, winds around mountains, over hills, and stuff like that. Anyway, here's, here's the picture of the way of holiness that I saw, the vision. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the road. It snakes, it's, it snakes off into the distance, and it comes up, and up, and up, and up, and then it goes overhead. And the road itself, I don't know where it starts, but it ends at the east gate in the temple of Jerusalem. And, uh, and again, that, that road is, is, is basically, as Isaiah um, tells us, is just for conversation. Um, uh, you, you wise virgins and, and, and all the other people that can walk on it, um, you can just take a nice stroll on it to have a conversation as you're making your way to or from uh, the east gate. And again, it's just a special gift that the Lord has given us um, just because he wants to. Um, I can't find anything in the Bible to say why he would make a special road um, specifically for us. But again, you know, I'm not God and uh, he has a plan and purpose for everything. So though, those are the three really cool things uh, that, that uh, we're going to be seeing uh, during the millennium that uh, again will become commonplace. Um, the city of rising smoke and the, the canopy over, over top of Israel. Um, canopy of smoke by day and a canopy of fire by night as well as the way of holiness and the way of holiness is really 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 cool it's a particular road above the other road and it just goes on for miles and miles it's just for us to enjoy a, a nice chat and a nice stroll on a nice hike to or from Israel so that's it um, there's there's still a lot more to come um, regarding the thousand years of peace uh, right now I will just leave off with that 
So uh, be a blessing wherever you are in internet land and YouTube world. Uh, remember, Jesus will be here sooner rather than later. So take care, stay in prayer. We'll see you in his kingdom somewhere over there or maybe even somewhere up in the air. Okay. Catch you later. Jesus rules.